What the heck is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Form Check Friday, everybody's favorite powerlifting technique review series on YouTube. You're here for it. We're here for it. Hopefully everybody's about to have a fantastic weekend. If you're interested in submitting your lifts for us to take a look at on Form Check Friday, go ahead and click the annotation on screen right now. And let's get stuck right in. So we'll start off with Mark here. Now, Mark's bench press uh, is how we left off last episode. So let's take a look. Now, Mark has been, uh, says his bench has been pretty stagnant this block. Uh, he's been adding some volume and frequency, but seems stuck. He feels like his legs, his leg drive and his arch is there, um, but not enough tightness. So this is his comp bench, 90 kilos for triple. Uh, he says he's been doing about eight months of powerlifting and wants to compete. All right, so I think the biggest thing here is number one, you could be way further back on this unrack. Like if you watch how far he's got to reach back to pick up the bar, I think he actually doesn't quite get it unracked the first time, right? So push that bench back further in there so that you're not having to pull it out such a huge distance, right? That's gonna allow you to hold a bit more position when you do unrack. And number two, when you're on the chest, Look how loose you got on the chest. You got to stay tighter on the chest. Like this is all good. You're driving your chest up. You're keeping the legs on. When you get to the chest, like look at how much the chest falls. If I draw a line right there on the chest, when you touch and then you go to press, there's like a good solid few millimeters, maybe even a couple centimeters there where your chest falls down because uh, when you get to the chest, you're loosening the back, you're kind of letting the chest fall. And then when you go to press, the chest is falling even more. So you have to keep that chest up. You have to keep that back tightness, tightness uh, consistently throughout the set, right? Like don't let it go when you get to the chest. Also, there's a lot of jostling and kind of like resetting at lockout because all of this loosened up so much on your press. So we need more consistency. We need more tightness from the, uh, you know, about here on the eccentric into the next rep. Like just getting an arch is not enough. Just getting an arch doesn't mean you're tight. You can arch without being tight. We need to be tighter. All right, and our next lifter here is Randall. Randall's doing some sumo deadlifts. Uh, he says this is 360 for three. Uh, he was kind of, didn't have a place to train during lockdown and COVID. Um, so he's just kind of getting back into deadlifting in the last six weeks. Um, he says he's experiencing some lower back pain, some doms. Uh, more or less on his deadlifts or after his deadlifts and he says this session was really hard usually 360 is really easy so the biggest thing man like I don't think you're making a lot of technical errors here you're just going too heavy too soon that's why you're so sore because you came back after however many weeks or months out of the gym and you're like yep I'll just pick up exactly where I left off uh, probably don't need to lighten the weights and uh, you know 360 was easy at one point so should be easy now and I just think you're overshooting a bit. Also, it could maybe widen the grip. These lockouts look a little short like this. Shoulders are super far forward. The whole like tucking yourself in like that is just gonna continue to roll the shoulders forward and make this look like it's not locked out. So widen the grip so you can pull those shoulders back and open the chest just a little bit. Present a bit more of a, an official looking lockout. Um, I mean, that's if you have plans to compete. If not, whatever, it's locked out enough. But if you're looking to compete, you probably, you know, you may get some, some red lights for that. So I feel like this first rep, you do a decent job pulling yourself into position, but you should have stopped the knees here and then pulled slack through your, your lats. Because what happens is you let the knees go forward. And then when you start the pull, see how your hips shoot back? Almost where I told you you should have stopped your knees, right? So I said to stop your knees here when you're pulling in and then pull the rest of the slack through the lats. What I mean by that is just really kind of pull pull the lats down like that. Try to pull your shoulder blades down, but you pull in a bunch more. And before the bar comes off the floor, would you look at that? That's where the knee angle is. Huh. So yeah, uh, we could probably leave, keep the knees and hips back a little bit so we're not getting into that like super upright squat pattern. 
and just tighten the upper back more. Also, don't anticipate that you're going to be just as strong as you were after time off. Um, you know, levels of fitness, strength, those are uh, temporary. Those are temporary situations. Just like getting weak from lockout uh, or from lockdown is a temporary situation. So don't expect to come back and just like crush weights that you used to do. Um, but I mean, you will get strong again. It'll be okay. But uh, yeah, I mean, if you're getting a lot of pain and a lot of soreness and everything's heavy, like it's probably just a sign you should do a bit less and, and be more patient. The biggest thing is just like getting to get into doing the thing. And I know that sounds stupid, but like if you just train, you'll get stronger. If you overshoot all your training, it's going to leave you potentially injured and you're going to have a hard time with your training. Okay. So this is Mitchell, uh, 465 for a double at nine. He says he gets a bit of a squat morning pattern when he goes heavy. Now, number one, before we start, um, I'm not sure those knees are totally locked. I, I mean, again, if you're, again, some of these things are if you're looking to compete and if not, whatever, but if you are looking to compete, let's lock those knees out a little bit better. And again, like there's just like no, there's almost no quads. It's a really interesting concentric there. You're somehow driving yourself straight up. And like that lockout, you're like locking out here where I feel like there's just so much more you can put into that squat before you start trying to drive your hips forward. Try to really feel your quads a little bit more. That second rep was better, smoother lockout. Don't worry about trying to like rush things and make everything super, super fast. Just try to feel the movement out, feel smooth. But it doesn't look to me like you have much of a squat morning at all. I think if anything, you're incredibly well suited to staying quite upright. Um, unless of course, you know, somehow a double at a nine isn't heavy enough to make you mess up. In which case, maybe you need to rethink how you're rating your RPEs. Uh, but a double at nine, like most technique issues, should be somewhat visible there. I mean, that's a pretty demanding set with a, a sort of high absolute load. But yeah, these look really good, man. It's just kind of a weird lockout. Like you're trying to, the first thing you're trying to do is like drive your hips through as opposed to just like finishing the movement. Like there's a real big priority on the hips and you kind of like jerk your way through it. I'd say just trying to like, Smooth, smooth it out, slow it down a little bit. But other than that, looks looks pretty damn good, man. I don't see any squat morning there at all. All right, next up is Luca. He says he's having some trouble progressing his bench press. And um, this is 80 kilos for five at uh, about a 9.5 or 10. So high RPE set here. Uh, and he says he's got some bar path inconsistencies. So let's check out this setup here. Unrack looks pretty okay, actually. Bar path looks pretty all right. <laughs> this is actually a really proficient bench, dude. Like this is a really well executed bench. I don't know that your your issue, if 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 there is an issue, is is technical. Your trouble progressing, progressing bench may just be that you need to like get some more muscle mass on your upper body, need to eat more, need to gain some weight, need to uh, increase your training stimulus at the very least. Because um, right here, you're at a bit of a, a disadvantage with such long arms. So I mean, maybe you could widen your grip. Surprise, surprise, I'm gonna tell somebody to widen their grip, but think about widening the, your grip so that you could have a little bit of a different angle of your upper arm, right? So you're not so far past your torso there. The other thing I would do is like, if this is your comp bench, I would definitely work on pausing. You could probably do yourself some favors just building more strength on the chest by using some pause variations, right? This is very touch and go, but like the touch here is great. It looks like you're doing a good job maintaining a nice big chest and the bar path is decent. I think the bar path is almost back and then back instead of back and then up. 
So you can probably lock out a little more in this direction, if that makes sense, right? And then your shoulders will stay in a bit of a tighter position between reps. Yeah, like you could probably push back to here instead of pushing back to here. Other than that though, I don't think your bar path is inconsistent. I think if anything, it's pretty damn consistent every rep. Like, let's see if we can identify where that lockout is every rep, right? So here's where we start. Press. So yeah, we're a little bit looser here, right? Cause you can see that bar went up further and back further, which means we've lost position in the shoulder blades. We've protracted, but like same range there. And again, a little further back this time. So we're losing a bit of shoulder position. We can tell by where the bar ends up, you know, there, same as rep two. And this one's even further back. So we have to work on keeping the shoulder blades depressed. And I think you can keep your lockout further down this way. Other than that, honestly, looks like a pretty damn good bench. Uh, you know, work on some upper body hypertrophy, um, try to gain a little bit of weight probably. And, um, you know, maybe program bench a little bit more often or use a little bit more overall volume. All right, this is Caleb. He says he's been switching between conventional and sumo. He says it's really hard to get into a good position. Uh, this is 405 for three at an eight. Yeah, so I can see the lock out there. Now, first things first, we need to try to understand what it means to get into like an extended position, right? So more shoulder blades down, more lower back extension, right? I think one of the things a lot of novice sumo lifters, um, we've made some videos about this even, a lot of novice sumo pullers think they need to push their knees out as hard as possible. They need to get their hips as close as possible to the bar. And a lot of times getting the hips closer to the bar means we're kind of dumping the pelvis underneath. So uh, try some cat cow exercises just to feel your back going through flexion and extension. A lot of times that can be pretty helpful in terms of just figuring out how we should align the back when we're talking about setting up for our deadlift. So uh, perhaps a narrower stance, perhaps, you know, butt back a little bit more and just prioritize putting more tension in the back because you can tell by how fast you pull in and start the bar. Like when you start, you're starting like out in front of the bar instead of pulling yourself all the way in. So more patience off the floor as well, right? Cause you see you're like pulling the bar into position with your back as the lift starts. And you're able to kind of pull out of that position and finish the rep on reps one and two, but then rep three, we're starting to lose that position because we're just pulling into flexion. Looks like it might be a really narrow uh, hand position. And a lot of times if the hands are too narrow, it's really tough to get the back into a good position and, and to get the back, you know, feeling like you're using your lats and, and kind of like building tension in your mid back. So a lot of times if you widen your grip a little bit, it can make it a lot easier to kind of set those shoulder blades down and, uh, you know, kind of create a little bit more tension in that mid back, get a bit more overall extension. So that's my advice. Hopefully that helps you, Caleb. All right, up next is Andrew. Now, Andrew's 27. Uh, he's spent two to three years powerlifting now. Uh, he, I think he said he was doing some bodybuilding style stuff before, uh, and he wants to compete in the future. So this is a five by five at 405. Uh, he says his squat seems to be stuck around the sort of 272 and a half kilo, 600 pound range. Uh, and he notices he's got a bit of a sticking point in his squat. So uh, we're going to leave this playthrough one more time. I want everybody to go down into the comments section below and leave your constructive criticism for our boy Andrew here. And I'm going to start next video with my critique of Andrew's squat. I want to thank everybody for tuning in to Z1, Z only form check Friday. And uh, again, if you're interested in submitting, go ahead and click that annotation at the beginning of the video where we showed that. And um, yeah, if you saw anything, if you were in the videos and you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments section below. Leave a like if you liked it. Make sure to hit subscribe. We'll see you in the next one. Uh, bye bye.